Allora, vogliamo ringraziare tutti, non c'è molto tempo, se non salta, da quello... però lascio la parola. A Grazie Francesco. Nicola, hai ragione, è un eufemismo il tuo. Uh, there is a... There, is, there, time. there is no time at all for this session, so we thank uh, Nicola Coccia, Giuseppe Cassani and all the speakers and panelists. Let's pass to the next session, shipbuilding. Uh, I think the coffee is in process, there are about 60 people outside so if everybody needs a coffee you know he could uh, uh, do during uh, the works have the coffee and we thank palumbo anyway also for his flexibility thank you very much mr shalia will be the hero of the day trying to rescue some time even though it's a very important session gentlemen Every, everybody's back from the coffee so we have to recover I don't know how many minutes you have, we have to recover but it's a big challenge <laughs> so I will try first to be very very uh, giving you uh, important news from Paris Carla Bruni Sarkozy is back from the clinic with little Julia mother and baby are in good shape and as a French guy I have to give news uh, which are the most important for us, maybe for you. Let us come from the child building to the ship building, a very bad joke, which despite, I must say, some uh, uh, likelihood, is slightly different. Uh, let us come back at what we said one year ago. It was uh, October 2010, and basically the conclusion was that there have been too many orders placed in the wonderful years up until 2008. 2009 was smoothing a bit the number of orders. 2010 was showing a bit more uh, critical. And uh, what has happened? By the way, 2010 has shown with, again, too many orders versus, I must say, the existing fleet. So what about 2011? Everybody is waiting for some more rational. And I may say that 2011 up until now has been quite difficult. So which means, again, too many orders. And today we are in a situation in which, I may say, if we look at the most significant markets for shipping, which are tankers, bulkers, and now container vessels, it seems that the charter rates are very low and might remain, you see, low as far as the new building orders are still not, I must say, all delivered. So which means there are going to be many, uh, uh, I would say, capacities, increase of capacity in the shipping which is going to come from the new building to deliver. I will just give you, instead of co going through my slides, which might be too numerous, and I will give you some figures. For tankers, starting from the beginning of 2008, the fleet has increased by 25%, and the order book is still having 20% more to come. The demand is not at this level, to swallow so easily so big numbers. If we go to the bulkers, of course there are big, I would say, variation among the different type of bulkers. But from the beginning of 2008 up until now, the increase of the fleet has been by 50%. And the order book is still 40% to come. Big numbers. If we go to the containers, Starting from the beginning of 2010, I'm taking a, a reduced scope, 40% in 2010, 
increase in number of TUs uh, in the fleet, and 30% is the order book versus the fleet of September 2011 to come, mainly with a very big one, the 8,000 TU and more. If we look at the LNG vessel, which is also the type of vessel which has been ordered massively this year, 65% of increase of the fleet from the 1st of January 2008, and the order book is 20%, from the fleet existing today with 65 vessels of which most of them are under speculation. I may say that it's quite worrying situation despite the fact that if we go to the main markets the transport volume to be, to be carried worldwide as we said 96% of the exchange worldwide are done by shipping is plenty of hopes if we go to the, uh, I must say, the bulk of demand, the bulk of demand is also showing a lot of growth, especially if China is wanting to import more than what they were doing before, which means, which seems to be the trend. So basically, plenty of good things, but nevertheless, I may say, a big worry due to the fact of the number of vessels to be ordered in the next years. So if everybody, like I was in a conference last week, and one of the speakers said we should stop and do everything which is possible to stop the new building orders, I might turn myself to China representative and ask to them, are you ready to have in the next years quite very few new orders and to adapt I would say your tremendous capacity, you see, in due proportion. For this is basically the main question which is behind. When, up until now, there have been subsidies to shipyards, you see, to deliver more. Just to give you an idea, the deliveries in 2004 were 25 million GRT. China, China had 12%. The deliveries in 2010 were 55 million GRT, so which means two times more. China has, is having 40%, and the order book is still 257 million GRT. Just for you to have the picture of the situation before we come to the contract. What I would say is that uh, I will skip the BV uh, activities. For uh, We have uh, close to 10,000 vessels in our fleet, uh, close to 85 million, and we have still an order book of 25 million with more than 2,000 vessels. So which means we are very concerned by the shipbuilding activity, as you might uh, recognize. I would just give you uh, a flavor of, I would say, what are the main uh, things you have to pay attention. In the next years, I must say, the contract might turn from a seller's market to a buyer's market. But the buyers will themselves face some difficulties of financing, might be difficulties with charge rates and so on. The next speakers will give you their approach of top expert in this field to help, I would say, buyers to be realistic in their approach. Another thing I would say is that, and I wanted to develop, but I have no, no more time to do it, is you have to rely on class companies to help you, but you have also to understand that the class companies, you see the class societies cannot do everything, I must say, to help, I must say, in critical situation. The class contract is signed between a shipyard and a ship and a, and a classification company. This is normally restricted scope, and the more you want, I would say, the class to be involved, the more you have to put that in your shipbuilding contract with the shipyard and to pay attention to it. That's it. And I give, I will uh, now call uh, Mr. Simon Curtis. Everybody knows him. I know him for many years. He has been a good friend in some difficult cases, negotiation. 
and he is a partner at uh, Curtis David Gara in London, which is one of uh, the law firm which is exclusively, I'm um, say, dealing with shipbuilding and offshore and oil and gas sectors. He is regarded internationally as one of the UK's most experienced maritime lawyers with extensive experience in a broad range of commercial shipping, offshore oil and gas agreements. He has plenty of recognition. I will not, I would say, uh, describe. So, Simon, the floor is yours and I know that you have an interesting presentation of how to handle the contracts with shipbuildings. Thank you.